The Demo Shop's here to save the day. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop update. This wasn't the Mod Collection's strongest week, but we've got eight guitars to cover with them, starting with their most ambitious design, the non-reverse Thunderbird, and the appropriately named Let Freedom Bling. Sure, welcome, you now have that Martina McBride song in your head. This was kind of tempting to buy because I haven't documented this model on the channel yet, and it's got an over-the-top patriotic finish. That's a metal flake sparkle American flag, stars in blue is a stinger design, then it almost looks like a movie theater popcorn box. <laughs> Red and white sparkles. But all that works really well with the blingy chrome that they throw on with everything. You got your regular unbound fretboard, but they don't let you down with your headstock. It's also sparkly, but look at that Gibson logo they threw on that truss rod cover. It's also got some razzle dazzle. But how is the back? Same as the front, including painting over the back plate. Nice. But the back of the neck is just straight up silver. Until we get to a very extended stinger there, showing us some more stars. And we got a hard shell case, all for $4,000. Which is roughly a $1,600 premium of what these usually look like. But looking at a normal one, you'll notice our pick guard. It's present here, but they ditched it on this one. That's why it looks so strange. And that was pretty chunky, but it did find a home. But our next one was a 70s Explorer in Fatigue Tan. So when I first saw this, I thought, okay, 4th of July week, maybe we're going to see some more patriotic designs. So this one immediately made me think Government Series 2 Explorer. Government Series 1 was a nice dark gray color, and then they moved to this more Desert Storm sand finish. This one has a little bit more orange to it. It's a bit darker, but I think that's what they might have been going for. It was a complete refinish. It looks like straight up gloss. And ooh, interesting, 80s tribute neck humbucker, then a burst bucker three in the bridge. I guess we'll just have to take their word that has the camo graphics on the pickups because I don't see it. But then they follow that up with a standard 60s in stone gem. At 3,300 bucks, let's see what they're doing. Kind of looks like the Les Paul modern finish, but a little bit darker. We don't have the poker chip, looks like aged pickup covers, aged custom shop style knobs, but still nice and shiny hardware. But then the back was a real shocker. Look at that, complete gloss gray. I would not expect this to be the back of this. Black back plates pair very well with those tuner tips and we get a black stinger. We did get a side profile shot, but I'm not sure if those colors jive or not. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But our next standard 50s was a little bit more uniform in the return of Lowrider Green. Wow, I didn't realize it was that blingy. Of course, the previous Lowriders have been pretty obnoxious. That's pretty much the theme this week. Obnoxiously sparkly to symbolize fireworks. Ooh, and it's the polychromatic type of sparkles. So that's going to be extra colorful. So nice sparkly green top. Looks like custom shop style knobs again. Got the ambered over lacquer, making our Gibson logo look a new color. But ah, looking at the back, it doesn't look like it's as boastful as the top. It's just a metallic green color. Kind of reminds me of the green robot Les Pauls. But you've got the extra magic on the top. Our next one was Sunset Blast. I think the custom shop did something like this. It was like Sienna Sunrise. That's got a very nicely uniform flame top up and down. I like this figuring within the wood too. It gives it character. But this one got a stinger too on the back. For a little bit of extra flair, only at 3000 Again, we see the return of Beach Activity Blue on this tribute. Baby blue finish with cream plastics, upside down neck pickup, and metal knobs. Paired with a regular headstock with a matching back with, oh wow, they changed some stuff up there. Push-pull pots. So you're going to have coil splitting and a pure bypass and face switching. All on a treble bleed circuit. You get similar things on the Les Paul Modern, but this is all hand wired. And then we have the toasted maple neck, they called it. A play on words of roasted maple. That's just a regular maple neck, though. They just colored it darker. And hey, they also gave it a case. So that's one of the few times where I think paying a premium for one of those tributes might have actually been worth it for someone. There was a deep grape Les Paul classic. If you missed out on this one, they also have a deep purple Gibson.com exclusive. This one's a slightly brighter shade and appears to be a satin finish. That's definitely apparent on the headstock. And then lastly, we've got the Mellow Whiskey SG Special. They gave it a similar color to its namesake. On the top, not on the headstock, but on the back and sides too. But it looks like it might have a very nice color shift effect to it in person because the light hit it a little bit more extremely right there. So you can see how dark it looks here and how bright it is there. So kind of like a black, yellow, and reddish mixture. 
Maybe not the mod collection's best week, but they had some good ones in there. But it's the demo shop that I teased you guys with. Look what they had in here. One of those custom blue floods. We just saw that two weeks ago in the mod collection. Now it had double black pickups in that one. And his serial number was CS100 something. And that was the first thing I had to check to make sure that it wasn't the same guitar. But no, this is 101. So they made more than one blue flood swirl with the stinger on the back. This one had these Schaller tuners on it instead of Golden Grovers but it also had the matching headstock. And I just really like this finish. I think that could sell at least 400 of those. Although I would argue the gold hardware worked better, but that's just a personal preference thing. Another sweet one was one of the Guitar Center Studio Darks. Maybe not the best time for them to post it on 4th of July week. This is more like Halloween style, but I love it. I want to see a custom shop with this. We haven't seen the demo and mod collection guys toy around with graphics on the pickups in a while, but that spider looks fantastic. And the mixing of the black and gold hardware works well. We just need like a golden binding around this, but it's a studio, so it's going to be a gloss finish. These were still specced with rich light fretboards and you got the black pearloid materials for your inlays. This is one really sweet studio. It's got a story. You're going to get people asking you about it. And the nice thing about these is you also get a real Mother of Pearl Gibson logo, even if it is grayed over. I like that addition of our new truss rod cover. But there was a whole bunch of production level stuff if that's what you're interested in. And this week wrapped up the tail end of their 15% off sale. The only new thing that caught my attention was this 54 reissue gold top. That's the pre-sale price, so take off 15% and that's what you got. I don't remember reviewing a 54 reissue, at least not in a long time. I was kind of tempted to pick it up. I mean, there's nothing special as far as like crazy custom colors and all that other stuff. It's just a great R4. But I got distracted and did something else, so it will be enjoyed in another home. But it looks like uh, maybe a solder blob dropped on it or something. They also had a 57 reissue for not too much more if you prefer humbuckers. And this standard 60s unburst had a very unique top. Great wood grain, great flame, with a very bright cherry red back with a little bit of figuring as well. And holy cow, it's the return of the Brazilian dreams. How many did they list this time? Just one. In case you missed it, about a year ago, the demo shop was pumping these things out. It was a limited edition of 150 guitars, of which they had a lot of unsold stock. They were like 13,000 brand new. So at that time, that's when the market got reestablished between 11,000 to 13,000. I never really liked that model till the demo shop blowouts. And then it made me appreciate them as the underdogs that they are, even though they are ridiculously expensive. It's one of the biggest slash flops in history. It's got some good wood grain. It's a plain top R8, but it has a Brazilian rosewood fretboard. So I was looking at this one, seeing their $11,000 price tag and thinking, if they truly did use up their Brazilian rosewood stock, why did they even bother selling these? Why didn't they take the time to rip off the Brazilian rosewood fretboard, put it on something else and say, hey, we've got one special Brazilian rosewood explorer left. If somebody's interested, it's got fancy inlays and market 30,000 hit price sell and it would pay for everything. But of course, they're also risking they could break the board when they take it off. But then they could put a new fretboard on this and say, hey, we've got random slash sign guitar, also $20,000. They would just have to erase what number it was. This one has the trucker hat and it says it's got the belt buckle and sunglasses and picks, but it's not saying anything about the handkerchief and a few of the other small things that it might have. If you happen to have missed out on this one, I do have a different one that I would sell for the same price. Just contact me. It's missing a little bit of case candy, but I think this one technically is too. But next up, there was one of those Adam Jones. Again, great deal. 2300 bucks. They've been showing up in the demo shop often enough. You might as well just wait if you don't mind having a few blemishes. Saving over 700 bucks. And I thought this 59 reissue had an interesting color slash top combination. There's also a white custom. I think that's about 1400 bucks off. Not too shabby. But now the thing I teased you with in the beginning. So it's a regular Les Paul Jr., right? Custom shop, TV yellow finish, looks nice. Fretboard could be darker, but whatever. But then I flipped over to the back and I was like, what? I've never seen that before. It's like a stinger, but without the stinger design, it's a half burst. I would actually like to see a TV yellow burst finish where the rest is just black. It works surprisingly well, especially in this transition area. Well, let's see, is there any story? Doesn't look like it, but I'll make up a story. An employee was supposed to shoot an additional layer of clear coat, but they accidentally grabbed the wrong gun and it had black finish. Fearing for their job, they quickly ran this to the demo shop and said, hey, you guys created this. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's 
far as the headstock, nothing else had changed. And ah, we don't get the cool junior case. Regular custom shop. But it was priced pretty fairly for one of these. This guitar appeals to a very specific market. Now it's time to grab our passports. The UK demo shop is our first stop. It's hard to even say if they updated this week. Because I only saw four new guitars. There's the 50s hand select top. Songwriter. 58 reissue for not even a discount and a Hummingbird Pro cutaway. Nothing too groundbreaking this week. But if we travel over to the Netherlands, they had some new stuff. There was this Les Paul Jr. with a sticker still on the pick guard, which is cool, but I wanted to share it because look at that. I don't know if it's their photo style that brought it out, but this back is not as dark as it normally is, and it's got some exceptional wood grain back here for a Jr. You can still tell it's a two-piece body, but that's nice. I think they might have hired a new photography guy, or he's changed up his style because look at this Les Paul Modern, I only wanted to share it with you because it really accentuates how this finish moves from light to dark. But all the new photos seem to be kind of slightly oversaturated. And zooming in on our photos, yeah that does look like a new guy. <laughs> Poor guy, trying to do his job and we're zooming in on him seeing, hey is that a new photographer? <laughs> But here's another case of they really brought out that gold top finish very well. But as far as the most unique model that they listed this week, it was a J35 VS Vintage Collector's Edition guitar. I don't really pay attention to acoustics too much, so Collector's Edition caught my attention. Got a nice mahogany back, old timey Gibson logo. If you want to check out an acoustic that looks kind of similar to this, view my Nick Lucas signature guitar review. That was a really fun one. I tied it into SpongeBob in a weird way, but I had gotten that guitar in a trade and it was just kind of fun to document. But the backside of this one looks like this, marked demo, custom shop, and it appears to have been from 2017. All right, troglodytes, that wraps up this week's editions. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.